Good day and thank you for watching the ACS Library. My name is Kyle and my goal is to help you prepare for the private pilot checkride for free in just five minutes a day. In today's video, we cover glide distance in the Cessna 172. You're out in the practice area performing clearing turns and the engine suddenly sputters. Oil pressure is in the red and shortly after you find yourself with a dead engine that won't restart. You're at 5,000 feet AGL, the nearest airport runway is seven miles away. Do you know off the top of your head if you can make it? or should you start looking for the best off-airport landing site down below? We'll answer that question in today's video. Before we begin, confidence is key during any emergency situation. You want to be confident that both you and your aircraft will perform in a predictable manner. While it is great to know expected glide distances based on the charts, to develop real confidence, it is very important that we go out and practice engine out procedures in a variety of density altitudes and wind velocities, making note of our aircraft's actual glide ratio in these situations. We can find all the information we need for today in the POH, open up to the table of contents, and the glide ratio for this Cessna is hiding out in Chapter 3, Emergency Procedures. Glide information can be found in the Engine Failure section. There's a simple little chart that we can use to determine our glide ratio. Glide ratio is simply the horizontal distance we will travel for every 1,000 feet we descend. We can say that an aircraft expected to glide 2.2 nautical miles for every 1,000 feet descent has a glide ratio of 2.2 for instance while maintaining VG, or best glide speed, with the propeller windmilling, or in other words, spinning slowly, typically as a result of airflow, with the flaps up and no wind present, we see that at 2,000 feet, we glide roughly three nautical miles. Or, in other words, we have a glide ratio of about a mile and a half per 1,000 feet of height above terrain. Let's apply this glide ratio to our engine failure scenario from earlier, using the simple, super easy to memorize equation. The sum of our glide ratio multiplied by our height above obstacles divided by 1,000 leaves us with our expected glide distance. As long as we have this equation and our aircraft's glide ratio memorized, we can calculate glide distance at any altitude. Based on our expected glide ratio of 1.5 with a height of 5,000 feet AGL, we should expect a glide distance of roughly 7.5 nautical miles. If we look over to our chart, we see that the ratio works out pretty well. We expect about a 7.5 mile glide distance here too. In our example problem, we found ourselves seven nautical miles from the nearest airport, which means we should be able to make it there with a small amount of altitude to spare. At this point, we should not hesitate to turn towards the airport if we haven't already, and now would be a good time to squawk 7700 and call ahead to let anybody in the area know to clear the airspace for you. Remember the glide distances in the POH are all expected values. It's a great idea to get out there and make note of the glide ratios in actual flight. The glide ratio is easy to memorize and can save you a lot of time and trouble in an emergency situation. This concludes today's video covering engine out glide distance in the Cessna 172 Skyhawk. As always, thank you so much for checking out the ACS library. If you've learned something from today's video, I hope that you might like or share it. If you're interested in seeing more, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell to the right of that to enable notifications. Questions and feedback are always welcome in the comments section. Thanks again and safe flying.